हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू सेवन इंच रनिंग यूट्यूब चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब और चैनल फॉर डेली सेवन इंच रनिंग वीडियोस एंड टुडे लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द मेन एंड बेसिक पॉइंट्स रिलेटेड टू द सिविल इंजीनियरिंग सो वी स्टार्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विद द स्लेप टाइप्स देयर आर टू मेन टाइप्स ऑफ द स्लेप वन इज द वन वे स्लेप एंड टू वे स्लेप सो हाउ वी कैन डिफरेंशिएट between these two types of the slip so when the ratio of longer span to the shorter span when this ratio is greater or equal to 2 we call it one way slip and when the same ratio longer span to the shorter span ratio is less than 2 we call it a two way slip so for example if i draw any dimension of the slip for example this is any slip and we provided here the length of this slip for example l is 15 meter and this width of the slip for example is 5 meter now when i divide the longer span to the shorter span so the longer span here is 15 and the shorter is 5 so 15 meter divided by 5 so we got here 3 so now the ratio of 3 is greater than 2 you see here so now this will be one way slip so now this slip can be categorized as a one way slip and keep in mind if i die wrote it the second point so keep in mind that that the main bars that the main bars are provided in shorter direction and distribution bar in distribution bar bars are provided in longer direction of the slip why because the shorter span has a higher bending moment that's why we provide the main bars along the in the shorter direction i also provided a separate video that why shorter direction of the slab has a higher bending moment you can watch this video in my on my youtube channel but keep in mind that the main bar if i draw again the cross section for example not the cross section but i mean the dimension for in a slab so the main bar are always provided in the shorter direction so this this is the shorter direction you see this one is the shorter direction i call it s shorter so this these are known as the main bars while this is the longer direction i call it for example l longer so the bars provided on top of the main bars they are known as the distribution bars in case of the slip so these are the distribution bars which are provided on top of the main bars and also they are provided in the longer direction so this was the second point the third important point i want to discuss here is that the weight of steel bar weight of steel bar can be found by the formula d square by 162 so if for example we have a steel bar this is a steel bar this is a steel bar we have and the diameter of this steel bar for example is 12 mm so we can find easily its weight of the steel bar so we will just simply put this d d is the diameter and to power square divided by 162 we will get the weight of the steel bar so d 12 is the millimeter is the diameter divided by 162 so 
144 divided by 162 we got here 0 0.88 kilogram per meter keep in mind that this value is the kilogram per meter now for example the length of this bar is 10 meter so we will multiply this 0 0.88 kilogram per meter multiply with the 10 what we got we got here 8.8 .8 kg so the weight of the steel bar for a 10 meter length bar is equal to the 10 kg this is the weight of the steel bar this formula gives you the value in kilogram per meter so this is the third point the fourth point i want to mention here is regarding the concrete cover keep in mind that the concrete cover is provided in, in various structure members to protect the steel reinforcement bar from the corrosion phenomena and the concrete cover ranges from minimum to from 25 millimeter to 40 millimeter and beam and slips they are provided like 25 millimeter but in footings they are provided minimum of 40 millimeter so but we can say the general range for the structure members is from 25 millimeter till the 40 millimeter but this range can also vary depending on the design of the member for example if the footing is used in the C area or the chloride area where there is more chances of corrosion then the designer can change this value to the 50 millimeter but the most general range for the concrete cover is 25 to 40 millimeter the next point I want to discuss here is the hook's length the hook length is equal to the 10 into d now 10 into d where d is the diameter of the bar now if i consider this is a in a cross section then we have a main reinforcement here And then we have a hook here for example this is a hook in the stirrups so this hook length I call it from here to here this is the length of the hook this can be found out by formula of 10d and 10 multiplied d, d is the diameter for example the diameter of this hook used here is 10 millimeter so we multiply 10 in diameter is also 10 millimeter so we got 100 millimeter so the length of this hook bar can be found out is 100 millimeter and keep in mind that this hook is mostly provided with an angle of 35 sorry 135 degree this angle is 135 degree this angle if I draw it like this way so this angle and this angle should be 135 degree hook why this angle I mean because this angle is quite good enough for the seismic region because when the earthquake comes there are different kind of stresses produced inside the member and with a 40 with a 135 degree hook we have a very better anchorage system in our beam cross section or column cross section that's why we always provide 135 degree hook in the earthquake region but anyhow the hook length can be found out by this formula where d is the diameter of the bar Hope you guys understand in the today lecture some of the important points and I will upload more important points in our 
coming lecture. Thank you for watching our video and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos.